Hello and welcome to Physics Video Optics Point 5, Combination of Lenses and Lens Makers Equation. We will go over the concepts as well as the calculations in this video. We're going to look at some more complicated situations involving lenses similar to what microscopes and refracting telescopes are. We will also look at how the radius of curvature of the lens is related to the focal length of the lens itself. We're going to look at a pretty cool simulation as well. In lens combinations, the image formed by the first lens becomes the object for the second lens. And in this case, the object distance may in fact become negative depending on where the original image is formed. For example, if we have an object um, at point O, so say here, Let's trace the three primary rays as they go first through lens A and then through, through lens B. And we can see where the image, the first image, ends up and then where the second image ends up. So keep in mind that the first ray goes horizontally parallel to the center line in and then out through the focal point. The second line comes in through the focal point and out parallel. And then the third line goes through the center. I apologize for them not being perfectly straight, but it'll still work. Okay, so they all converge there. So this is the object from point, from lens A. However, this is also the object for lens B. So you can see now our object is inverted and it is diminished or smaller, but we can still use the same three rays for the second lens. One coming in parallel, going out through the focal length. One coming in through the focal length and going out parallel and one coming in through the center and going out straight. So now this is where the image for lens B ends up. So we start with our object way over here, a red arrow going in the upward direction, and we end up with our image way over here. In this case, it is not inverted. And so it is upright and it is a little bit smaller. We can also calculate the uh, magnification. Remember that the magnification for one lens, let's say for lens A, is a negative di over do, which is also equal to the negative hi over ho for the height of the object and image or the distance of the object and image. But when we have a lens combination like this, the magnification becomes the magnification of lens A times the magnification of lens B. So we would end up with a negative dia over doa times a negative DIB over DOB. Now keep in mind that the image distance for lens A is not necessarily the object distance for lens B, even though the image of A becomes the object of B. And that is because the image distance is for A is going to be from the image, from the lens A rather, to the image. However, the object distance for B is going to be the other part of that. So in this case, if the lenses are 80 centimeters apart, then the object distance for B is going to be 80 minus whatever the image distance from A was. So while it's the same place, it's just referencing it from two different perspectives. So we can have a situation like this where the lens 
A and lens B are far enough apart and the object is far enough from lens A that you end up with a quote unquote normal situation here. However, it can get a bit confusing if we move lens B up close to A because then the second lens could interfere with the light as it comes out of lens A. Likely, Luckily though, we can still use our same equations and solve as if B were not in the way to determine where the first image is. The only difference would be that the image distance for A does still become the object distance for B, but it will be a negative value. Before we get into an example where you're going to end up with a negative uh, object distance, let's take a look at Lensmaker's equation. Lensmaker's equation is useful in relating the radii of curvature of two lens surfaces and the index of refraction to the focal length. So when we have a lens like the one shown here, this is obviously two different curvatures on the left and the right side. Radius one is a curvature of 22 centimeters. And what that means is that if you were to continue this circle around, you would end up with a circle centered at point C with a radius of 22 centimeters. The inner side or the right side of this lens, however, has a radius of curvature that is quite a bit different. This radius of curvature is a negative 46 centimeters. And the reason that this one is negative is because of the side of the lens that we're talking about and the direction that light would be going through it. So when we want to compare these radii with their index of refraction of the lens, we end up with this lens maker's equation. This is what they use to figure out how your prescription glasses should be formed. So rather than one over F equaling one over DO plus one over DI, which you don't know unless you're looking at something, we can say that one over the focal length of the lens is equal to N minus one, where N is your index of refraction times the quantity of one over R1 plus one over R2. This determines the focal length of the lens that you will create. Now, keeping in mind that we have six different types of lenses, we need to be able to determine the focal length based on the shapes of the lenses, not just what we're seeing through them. So for example, we have the converging lenses on the left where we have double convex, where it's curving out on both sides. We have plano convex, flat on one side, curved out. And then we have a convex meniscus. The convex meniscus is having convex on one side, in this case it's on the left, and then a slight concave on the right side. It's not exactly concave, it's not concave enough to say that it's one convex and one concave, but it's, it is in fact what's going on. In the last picture that I showed, that's why the radius was negative, was because it was one of these convex meniscus lenses where the inner side, the right-hand side, was curved in slightly. For our diverging lenses, remember we have double concave, plano concave, and a concave meniscus. And the concave meniscus, again, it's concave on the left-hand side, but the right-hand side also has a slight curve to it in the same direction as the left-hand side. So when we are looking at these different situations, we need to be aware, number one, that the radii could be different. And number two, we have to keep in mind which one will be positive and which one will be negative. So let's see how this actually looks. So you can see here on this Wolfram demonstration with the lens maker's equation that we can change the thickness of the lens, D. Let's make it a little thinner here. And as we make it thinner, the position of the image changes. And notice that all the light comes through from the left-hand side and meets together at one point here on the right-hand side. We can also change the radius of curvature, the 1 over R1. And we can make one side fatter and notice how the Focal point is changing again. Now let's change the other one. 
And notice when we get to the point where they are just about both flat, it doesn't appear that the rays are coming together much at all. If we go the other way, you can notice that the light's still coming in from the left, but now it's being refracted back through to the left as well. So we have no image on the right-hand side. Let's go back till we have one of each. And again, you can see that the image is formed here, and um, this will tell you the focal length given your R1 and your R2 using the lens maker's equation. Now, if we change the index of refraction, you can also see that this definitely changes the focal length by making it greater as the index of refraction gets smaller. And as the index of refraction gets larger, it bends even greater so that the focal length gets smaller and smaller and then spreads out again quite quickly. So I would check out this site if you get a chance, Wolfram Demonstrations pages, um, the demonstrations.wolfram.com, and the URL is on the last slide. Let's take a look at an example now. We have two converging lenses that are placed 45 centimeters apart. Lens A has a focal length of 10 centimeters. Lens B has a focal length of 8 centimeters. If an object is placed 22 centimeters to the left of lens A, find the location and magnification of the final image. So we've got our two lenses. They are 45 centimeters apart. We have an object 22 centimeters to the left of A. The question is, where is the final image and what is its magnification? So we're going to do this in two steps as always. So we're going to say 1 over DO plus 1 over DI equals 1 over F. Starting with lens A, that gives us that 1 over 10 minus 1 over 22 is equal to 1 over the image distance of A, where 22 is the object distance and 10 is the focal length. We solve this and find out that the image distance for lens A is 18.3 centimeters. So that means that it's going to be in here somewhere. So we now need to convert that to being an object distance. So the object distance would be 45 minus 18.3 or 26.6 repeating centimeters. And this is equal to the object distance for lens B. So we're gonna use this to find out our final image position and the lens equation here again. And so we end up with one over eight minus one over 26.6 repeating is equal to one over the image distance for B. This gives us the image distance for B becoming 11.4 centimeters. Now the fact that 11.4 centimeters is a positive number, number means that the final image is over here on the right hand side. Now in terms of the magnification, remember the magnification is the magnification of A times the magnification of B which would give us a negative DIA, 18.3, over DOA, which is 22, times a negative 11.4 over 26.6. We multiply these together and we find out that the total magnification of this lens system is a positive 0 0.357. So it is um, upright, that's what the positive means, and it is smaller than the original.
Now let's see what happens if we move the lenses together. We have the same two lenses, the same placement of the object, which means that since the object is still placed in the same position, that the image distance from A is going to remain the same of 18.3 repeating centimeters. But now in this case, the lenses are only 10 centimeters apart. So rather than the distance between them being 45, the distance between them is now 10. So with an image distance being 18, our object distance for B is going to be 10 minus 18.3, which is a negative 8.3. That means that the initial image for lens A, for the object being over here, the initial image is going to be formed over on this side. We still solve the math the same way. So from there, we're gonna use the thin lens equation, one over DIB is going to be equal to the focal length, one over eight, minus one over the DO, which will be minus and minus is plus, one over 8.3. This gets us to saying that the image distance for lens B is 4.07 centimeters. So even though the image for lens B is to the right of it, the resulting object at the end is still formed over here on the right hand side. To find the magnification, negative 18.3 over 22, similar because they're same lenses to begin with, over a negative, sorry, not over, times a negative 4.07 over negative 8.3. Well, a negative over a negative makes this one a positive, so a positive times a negative makes this a negative. So the magnification is now a negative 0 0.408, which means that your final image is going to be inverted. Let's do an example using the lens maker's equation now. A double convex lens has surfaces with radii 28.0 centimeters and 74.0 centimeters. So remember, double convex goes like this. Because it's one of these, we know that both of these radii are going to be positive. Remember, if it were concave, because the radii are pointing in towards the center and it's as if the circles are not overlapping with each other, the radii would be negative, but since our lens is convex, we don't have to worry about it being negative. Lens maker equation says, oh, sorry, didn't finish reading the question. A double convex lens has, a, has surfaces with radii of 28.0 centimeters and 74.0 centimeters. If the focal length is 33.6 centimeters, what is the index of refraction of the lens material? So one over F, is equal to n minus 1 times 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2. So 1 over 33.6 is equal to n minus 1 times 1 over 28 plus 1 over 74. Divide both sides by your addition over here, simplify, and you end up with n minus one equaling 0 0.6046. So n is 1.6046, keeping in mind our sig figs from the original data, the index of refraction of the material that this lens is made of is 1.60. So if you really wanted to, you could look this up and find out what type of glass this is made out of. Um, but this is how you would use lens maker's equation, knowing what type of lens you have and plugging the numbers in. Keep in mind that your R's will be negative if it is a concave lens. That is about it for today. So bye for now.